facilitatem sanctum Jerusalem, chorus angelorum te suscipiet, et cum lazaro condem pauperia, eternem habeas requiem. De profundis tamari et te domini, fiend aures tuae intendes, in vocem deprecationis mea, si iniquitates observeris domini, domini quis sustenebit, qui are apud te propitiatio est, et propter legem tuam sustenuit de domini, sustenuit anima mea, in verbo eus speravit anima mea, in domino. A custodia matutina, usque ad noctem sperat, Israel in domino, qui are apud dominum misericordia, et copiosa, apud eum redemptio, et ipsi redimet Israel, ex omnibus iniquitatibus, eus. Benedictus Dominus Deus Israel, qui are visitavit et pecit redemptionem plebis suae, et erexit a cornu salutis nobis, in domo David puri sui, secut locutus est per os sanctorum, qui e secula sunt profitarum eus, salutem ex inimicis nostris, ed imanu omnium qui odorant nos, ad faciendam misericordiam cum patribus nostris, et memorare testamenti sui sancti. Just he's been drinking again. Patrem nostrum, datorem se nobis, ut sine timore, de manu inimicorum nostrorum liberati serviam. Ego sum resurrectio et vita, qui credit in me, et em si mortuus furit, vivet, et omnis qui vivit, et credit in me, non morietur in eternum. Kyrie liaison, Christi liaison, Kyrie liaison.
I was saying, I think we need some petrol. I'm sorry, it was my fault, darling. These roads twist so it's impossible to follow them. It's not your fault. I should have dipped the tank away back. Bone dry. I shall run on to see if I get some help, I'm afraid. Someone to tow us. Shall I come with you? No, it'll be quicker if I go alone. All right. Now you stay here in the car. You'll be quite safe. Gerald. Try not to be long. I'll try. your car. Don't leave it there. Uh, someone may want to come in. They won't, sir. Won't they? No one ever comes in there, sir. Why not? Oh. Why not? Good night, sir. What do you think, Gerald? Well, I... we'd better get on the shelter. Why can't you leave us alone? We wonder if you might have a room. A room? You want a room? Yes, for the night. Oh, you're, you're strangers then, huh? Well, yes. Oh, please, please come in. Come in, please. <laughs> come 
man. Oh, you're wet. Oh, come in and dry yourself. Anna! Anna, we have people and guests. Come quickly. Excuse me. What a night. What a night. You've left your horses outside? We came by motor car. Motor car? Oh, you must be a very rich young man. <laughs> it's my father's car. We borrowed it for our journey. Oh, so? Hmm. Oh, Anna. Anna, look. We have guests. Would you show these good people a room while I get their luggage, hmm? I'll get your luggage. Oh, please, you'll get soaked. Wait until the rain stops. Oh, I have an umbrella. <laughs> Oh. Will you sign here, please? What room do you want? I beg your pardon? Which room? They are all vacant. All e except one. Well, uh, nothing too expensive. We still have a long way to travel. Five marks? Yes, that'll be fine. It is the best we have. This way. I will bring you fresh linen and hot water. Is there anything else you require? Some tea, perhaps. Certainly. My husband will lay a fire for you, just as soon as he returns with your luggage. Don't you see? This is rice. I found it among their luggage. Well, now, don't you see what this means? They're just married. This is the honeymoon. Oh, Anna, look, we must do everything we can to make them comfortable, eh? I am fetching them hot water now. What more can I do? Oh, Anna. Anna, try to forget. Please. Just for tonight. For their sakes. Please. Wait. Hello. What company? Someone has just delivered a letter. Somebody pretty important, too, by the look of the carriage. Oh, what? come here. What's wrong? It's your ear. Stop it, darling. The tea will get cold, darling. I know. Come in. For you, sir? For me? But well, that's impossible. Oh, no, it's addressed to you, the English gentleman, the Grand Hotel. Uh, that's us. Oh, who can it be from? Ravner. Yes, that's the Herr Dr. Ravner. Oh, very fine gentleman. He's lived at the Chateau now for some years. Is that the one we saw on the mountain back there? Yes, my love. He wants us to have dinner with him. What? Well, that's what it says. I should like to offer you my sympathy and extend an invitation to dine with me tonight. 
You'll find the food at the hotel at... Well, I'll skip that bit. My wife is a good woman, but a cook. <laughs> My carriage will call at eight, which I trust will be convenient. Well, what do you say? I... I haven't anything to wear. Oh, he's forestalled you there. Um, come just as you are. We shall not be formal. I think we should go. Oh, you should go, madame. I heard doctor's a very charming gentleman, and his table is one of the best in the country. It'll be an experience for you, madame. Very well. Good evening. Dr. Ravner is expecting us. surprises. Pleasant ones, I hope. You expected the inside of my house to be as unattractive as the outside, is that it? Well, um, if it were, I could not live here. I like only to be surrounded by beautiful things. And as I am fortunate enough to have the means to satisfy my wish. <laughs> but there I go. Please excuse my appalling manners. We have so little company here that I sometimes forget how to behave. My name is Ralph. Gerald Harcourt, and my wife, Marianne. Welcome to my house. It was very kind of you to invite us. It was indeed. I still can't quite understand how you found out about us so quickly. To tell the truth, I was spying on your motor car. Such things are a rarity in these parts, and when I heard the sound, I used my telescope to watch you drive by. Oh, we didn't. <laughs> we broke down. No, that is true. And before I could do anything to assist you, you had taken the initiative yourself, Mr. Harcourt. Now, please, come and meet the rest of my family. Thank you, madame. And now, may I introduce my children to you? My daughter, Sabina. How do you do? And Carl, my son. How do you do? Mr. and Mrs. Harcourt. How do you do? Will you play some more for us? Later, I think, Carl, after dinner. to see us, my sweet. Why have you waited so long? It was 
us know how much we have missed you. You should not be lying here all alone. a series of scientific experiments, one of which went wrong. I was to blame, of course, I made a mistake. Scientists sometimes do. Anyway, that is why I can never return to the city of my birth. Why I live here, locked in this ornate coffin. Oh, but it's beautiful here. It often happens in life that the most beautiful things are made from the most unpromising of materials, don't you find? That wine we enjoyed at dinner, you did enjoy it, I hope. It was delicious, made from grapes trampled by the feet of a peasant. Thirty feet as like as not. Father! Well, it's true, isn't it? That pheasant we ate, it had been hanging for oh, five... Father, please. Perhaps Mrs. Hartford would like to hear you play. Oh, please. Something of your own, perhaps, Carl? Certainly, Father. Well, something you've composed yourself. How exciting. Singularly lovely wife, Mr. Hart. Thank you.
No more now, Carl. I'm sorry. I thought... Marianne. I thought you were going to faint. Perhaps what? it's too warm in here. Oh, no, it's not that. It's just that she's had a rather long day. I think, if you'll excuse us. Of course. Sabina, will you ring for the carriage? Yes, Father. You will play for me again, won't you? It will be my pleasure, madame. Good night, Carl. Good what night. are you going to do about your motor car, Mr. Harcourt? Well, we need petrol. We plan to get to Kronenberg tonight. I know they keep a supply there. But that's 30 miles away. And across the mountains, too, you wear off your track. My wife is not a very good map reader, I'm afraid. <laughs> If you don't mind staying at the hotel for another day or so, I'll gladly send over for your petrol for you. Thank you very much, sir. Not at all. I'd invite you to stay here, only I'm expecting a number of guests. Oh, no. The hotel will be fine, thank you, sir. The food isn't that bad. <laughs> it was a wonderful evening. I shall never forget it. Down. No petrol. That's right. They can't leave until I say so. You went, yes? Very, thank you. <laughs> yes. And the food was good, yes? You were quite right. It was absolutely excellent. Ah, uh, yes. And the Herr Dr. Ratner, charming, no? <laughs> Landlord! Brandy! Oh, well, then, then. Good night, sir. Good night. And good night, Mrs. Hart. Good night. Terrible day. Four. Is it? Five. Will you ever forgive me for losing six. the weight? I might. I'll see. Now. Thank you.
please. Well. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, but the door was opened. Anna and I wondered whether you'd get to have breakfast with us. Uh, we'd open the dining room, of course, but it's a bit damp. Oh, we'd rather eat with you, wouldn't we? Much rather. Oh, in five or ten minutes, then. Huh? In ten minutes, we'll be there. <laughs> oh, fifteen. extra place again. Oh, my dear. I've told you so many times. Oh, good, good morning. morning again. Good come morning. in, good please, morning. come in. Oh, is our fellow guest joining us for breakfast? Uh, oh, no, no, no. He never eats. How does he live, then? On brandy and sour cream. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree, but... Uh, <laughs> this weather won't do your business much good. Business is never any good. But surely, with the magnificent views you must get from here in good weather. Well, yes. The road is not much used by travellers. I expect your bar is well patronised in the evenings, though, by the local people, the farmers. <laughs> it used to be. Nobody comes here now. Oh? Why is that? Uh, oh, some bread, madame. Thank you. frightened the life out of me. Here, look at this. Tanya, age 14. She's awfully like Anna, isn't she? Why does she hide it away? Why does she lay in place with someone who never eats? Shh. Be our fellow lodger. I think I'll have a word with him. Good morning. Herr Zimmer, isn't it? Professor Zimmer. My name's Harcourt. We're fellow guests. When are you leaving? Well, in a day or two. When we've Good. Got Why do you want us out of the way? Look, what's all the mystery? What mystery? Well, this hotel. Why does no one ever come here? Excuse me, I have work to do. Please, I'm only asking for information. I advise you to ask no questions of anyone in this region. Well, that puts me in my place. Nice to see you. Is your sister with you? Yes, she's in the coach, but we can't stay. Oh, but you must. I know Marianne will be delighted to see you. I'll call her. We can't stay long. Look, the weather's changing. Marianne, come on, look who's here. Come in, come in. Now, let me offer you some refreshment. Sabina, this is a lovely surprise. I'll call the landlord. I don't suppose he has any champagne. No, please, we haven't time. I bring news of the petrol for your motor car. 
My father has confirmed that there is a supply in Kornberg. Oh, excellent. It will take a little time. We had to send an ox cart for it. They are not so fast as motor cars. But more reliable. <laughs> it will not be here till Sunday, I'm afraid. Oh. In the meantime, my father asks if you'll do him the honor of attending a party he is giving on Saturday night. Oh, please, Daniel, come. The other guests will be so dancing. There'll be music. And dancing? It'll be a good party. Please say yes. Won't it be very formal? I know exactly what she's going to say. I haven't got a thing to wear. And in this case, it applies to me, too. If you will not consider it impertinent of me to offer, I have a dress suit I could lend you, Gerald. And I have the most heavenly dress. It's red chiffon and lace. And I'll send you my red velvet cloak to match. Oh, it'll look wonderful on you, Marianne. Oh, please, say yes. Then, yes. Oh, I'm so glad. And I'm coming, too. Oh, tell us some more about the party. Well, a chef is coming from Paris just to prepare the buffet. Oh, how wonderful. And an orchestra is coming from Vienna. Good morning. The weather seems to be improving. It's getting a little brighter, I think. Please excuse us. Drive on. Drive like the devil. Oh, perfect, sir, perfect, but one little touch. <laughs> Thank you, Bruno. Now, who's that handsome man? Darling. Is that all? Oh, I'm speechless. You look terrific. Thank you. Oh, madame, may I add my congratulations? You look enchanting. And thank you, Bruno. <laughs> Fits perfectly. But that's thanks to Anna. She's worked wonders. Thank you, Anna, dear. Uh, Anna, you're crying. Oh, my job. <laughs> Would you care for a drink, sir, in, in, in the bar? Hmm? Oh, good idea, Bruno. Anna, did you once have a daughter of your own? Why do you say that? It's not true. Why do you say it? I'm sorry, I... I only... That was a carriage, madame. You look marvelous, darling. <laughs> Madame. <laughs> Madame. I beg of you. Be careful. What are you talking about? In God's name, be careful. What do you think he meant, Gerald? Oh, don't worry, darling. He's been drinking.
your masks. Though in your case, Marianne, it will be a desecration. But in mine, an improvement. Is that what you mean? <laughs> you know I did not mean that. Ah. Will you permit me? Mm. Yeah. I think it is an improvement. <laughs> now, would you care for some champagne or would you like to dance? Oh, I'd love to dance. Oh, champagne for me. In that case, may I? Champagne. I couldn't. I feel quite dizzy as it is. I wonder where Gerald is. You're hungry, I expect. Let me get you some supper. No, I really must find Gerald. I'll find him for you. Would you see that Mrs. Harcourt gets some supper? I won't be a moment.
the bar with that brother of yours. Come on! A special glass? That sounds good. What about a special glass for you? Hmm? Later. Oh. Draws all. Mmm. Delicious. Ah. Perhaps Marianne went outside. Oh. Oh. You had a little too much to drink. A little? I don't like a lot. Come upstairs and have a rest. You'll feel better after. Mm, look here. Huh. You're not trying to leave me astray, are you? Because I'm a respectable married man. Oh, <laughs> Is that your room? Very pretty. After you.
Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce a new disciple. What's happened to the party? Marianne? Carl, thank goodness. What do you want? What I want? What do you mean what I want? I want Marianne. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, if this is a joke, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. This is no joke. You come here, get drunk, have to sleep it off. And now you say you want someone called Marianne. Well, I do want her. She's my... What do you mean, someone called Marianne? You know who she is. I do not know. What? You came here alone. And you can leave that way. I, I came here alone. Precisely. And we're beginning to regret that we ever invited you. Hans, show this gentleman out, will you? Yes, sir. You saw me come here with my wife, didn't you? The lady with the red dress and the red cloak. Well, you opened the door for us! You came alone, sir. What's all this about? Hans. If you keep away from here, we'll set the dogs on you. Bruno! Oh, fool! 
You know what I'm talking about. Don't, sir. Who do you think all these clothes belong to, then? other things. Oh, God. I understand you wish me to issue a warrant, sir, is that correct? Yes. Against her, Dr. Ravna and his family? Of the Chateau Ravna? Yes. The most important residence in the district? No doubt. You realize, sir, that her, Dr. Ravna, is the most respected of gentlemen? What has that got to do with it? It has a great deal to do with it, young sir. You arrive here, a stranger, a foreigner, in fact. You are here for less than a week. When you start accusing one of our leading citizens of abducting the lady you say is your wife, she is my wife. The landlord says you came here alone, sir. I have it here. Well, what does his wife say? She is a strange woman, sir. She refuses to say anything. I think she is a little... Look, I didn't come here alone. I came here with Mrs. Harcourt, my wife. Can you prove that, sir? I mean, for instance, where are her personal belongings? Her clothes? They've disappeared. Disappeared, sir? Yes, disappeared. Or well, stolen, if you like. So you wish me to make out a warrant against the thief, sir? No, I don't. I only want... ...the register. There's nothing there, sir. Professor Zimmer, please help me. My wife, she's disappeared. I know, she's been kept in the chateau. God. Thank God you know where she is. Are you a religious man? Not very. Do you believe in God? Yes. And the devil? Oh, not the horn-headed, long-tailed devil of the picture books. I mean, the real devil. The force of fundamental evil. He exists, you know. Uh, I suppose he does. I I never really thought about it. The corruption of human beings by the devil can take many forms, some of them so foul as to be beyond human belief. But because they are beyond belief doesn't mean they don't exist. Do you know what a vampire is? Yes. I've heard of vampire bats. No, not bats. Vampires. Human vampires. Beings who exist on the blood of other humans. When the devil attacks a man or woman with this foul disease of the vampire, the unfortunate human being can do one of two things. Either he can seek God through the church and pray for absolution, or he can persuade himself that his filthy perversion is some kind of new and wonderful experience to be shared by the favored few. And then he tries to persuade others to join his new cult. I had a daughter. She was all I had in the world. I idolized her. When she was very young, she ran away from home. Ran away to the city. She drifted in with a so-called smart set, and finally she was living with a certain man. Well, she came home eventually. What was left of her came home. She was riddled with disease. And she was a vampire. They even tried to follow her beyond the grave. Thank God I was in time. I 
my soul. Now rest in peace. The name of the man who corrupted my daughter was Ravner. My God! And Marianne is with him! I must go there! No, no! No, not now! Yes, now! Now! No, no. come here! Look! Look! The sun! The one thing a vampire can't tolerate. Now, your wife is safe until nightfall. And then, I shall do what I have to do. You, my friend, will remain here. What are you doing? I, I, I've given you a drug. It'll make you sleep. Help to bring back your strength. You'll need it before the night is out. Zimmer! Please, listen to me. I need help, and I think you can help me. Your name is Tanya, isn't it? And your father is her Bruno, isn't he? Tanya, my wife is here somewhere. They've taken her too. Do you know where she is? Yes. Will you take me to her, Tanya? I realize this may be very dangerous for you. But I promise I will give up my own life rather than let any further harm come to you. Please, Tanya, please, take me to her. I understood my son told you not to come here again, Mr. Harcourt. Where is she? Your charming wife. She is here, quite safe and happy. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Harcourt? <coughs> you must not expect your Queensbury rules here, Mr. Harcourt. Now, about your wife. You please let me say it for you. If you have so much as harmed one hair of her head, is that how it goes? Now, about your lovely young wife, Mr. Harcourt. I expect that you would like to see her. Sabina, would you be so kind as to go and waken her and bring her here? I will not say that she has not changed in any way, Mr. Harcourt. She has, as you might put it, grown up, tasted the more sophisticated, more exotic fruits of life. Oh, my God! God is hardly involved, Mr. Harcourt. Furthermore, having glimpsed these new horizons, I very much doubt if she will express any desire to return with you to England.
Marianne, your husband is here. Don't you want to see him? No, I only want to see you. You've hypnotized her. She's in a trance. Marianne, take your eyes away from me. Look at me, Marianne. For God's sake, look at me. Do you love him, Marianne? No, I love you. Don't you want him anymore? No, I want only you. Prove to me that you do not love him. Well done, my dear. Sit there. Tanya, I want you to initiate Mr. Harcourt into our society. Do you understand what I mean? You uh, know the priest, Father Xavier? Well? Yes. I'm taking this. Now? Now. Well? What are you waiting for? I can't. What are you frightened of? Hmm? I can't tell you. Then I'll tell you. 
It's Ravna, isn't it? No. no. You're afraid of what he may do to your daughter. You know, he's up there in the shadow with him, aren't you? He, he told me last night. Do you want the same thing to happen to her? No. No. Then take that message. Why don't I go? No. It'll be quicker. The moon will soon be rising. Tonight is going to be a full moon. Come on, you've got work to do. I've been planning this night ever since I traced Ravner to the chateau. From these medieval old books, I've pieced together the details of a ceremony. The ceremony to be performed on the moon is full, and Capricorn in conjunction with Saturn, as it is tonight. What ceremony? A ceremony known as Corpus Diabolo Levitum. The evocation of the forces of evil. It is a way of forcing evil to destroy itself. Ah, Ravna and all his acolytes are trapped in the chateau. Tonight I shall destroy them all. Won't they have run away by now? No, not now. I've sealed all the entrances of the chateau with the distillation of garlic. No vampire will pass that. Well, what does he say? What does the master say we should do? You are to remain calm. Remain calm? How can we remain calm? I'm trying to remain calm. Hold me the mountain to see it. Yes, 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 yes. No, you don't. You're not leaving till you promise to bring him here to us. Yes, 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 yes. Well? We want to know the truth. Why are we trapped here? What's this force that's preventing us? Why are we here? Really dangerous? Oh, really dangerous. Yes, you are. They are trying to destroy us. You must save us! Trust me! What are you going to do? They came here tonight to take the girl away because they did not want to risk her life while they were trying to destroy us. She was our protection then. She must come back and protect us again. I start by drawing a simple circle, inside which I shall inscribe the great pentacle of Solomon. Like this. Ah. I leave a space there so that I can enter later. And now. during the ceremony. Sword, the ring, the liquid, and the horn. Ring, sword, the liquid, and the horn. incantation. Bagabi, Laka, Bakabe, Amak, Kahi, Akaze, Karelios. Yo, Zaki, Abati, Kaila, I pray thee, without hurt done to my person or my companion, in the name of thy master and mine, by the four words of the great god Agla said with his own mouth, 
by the nine heavens in which thou dwellest, by the strength of the sun and the moon, and by the power of fire and water. I conjure thee, in the name of the great God Alpha, in the name of the mighty Beelzebub, appear! Gerald. <laughs> 